Okay, so I've saved. Let's let's plow into this a little harder. Uh, first and foremost, let's let's put on the uh, my disco ass blazer. Save again. Let's talk to the rookie. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. Hold on, you're a patrol officer of the R RCM? Yes, I am. I'm on a murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. Is everything alright? Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. I mean, why would I want to talk to you? God, I don't know why. I'm just trying to do my best. But you're not trying your best, are you? He says with a flash of Calm anger. Down. She says to the man, then turns okay, to fine. you. Let's talk. What did you want? Let's see. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? What precinct are you from? What precinct? She just sighs. Am I from? God, he doesn't know. F and deranged lunatic. The man wearing sunglasses pushes through his teeth. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Alright, bye. They're from my precinct. I am turboed. You look like shit. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. Uh, let's see, last oh, one is rough. So okay, sure. we've already it's not done just this. this week. Okay. Spirit of the court. There we go. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. From where? Another life? Yes, yeah, from another life. A different life. Perhaps the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? 41st. Okay, okay, the man sounds genuinely excited. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. He gives you a long, meaningful look and adds, somewhere good. Let's talk more about this hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Oh, the hypothetical 4-1. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. Uh, so what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Kim's cooler than you. I'm sure he's effing flattered, but Kim's not part of this thought experiment. In this one, we're partners. The lieutenant is silent. You seem like a bit of a drag. I could do better. None taken, my friend. None taken. He waves his hands. Let's be honest, there's been some purely fictional talk in our imaginary station in regards of who'd even be worthy of your partnership. And the conclusion is that a man with your caliber should form his own one-man policing unit. He nods eagerly along. And what else would just slow you down? Do you have a crime to solve? No, oh, no, 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 no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. This isn't helping, she says, shaking her head and looking at the man with the sunglasses disapprovingly. Who else are in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but the man pauses for dramatic effect. Police officers! Yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys, and get this, and not getting their drink on at 2 o'clock. Just some regular boring uh, mother effers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lung. Who is the far out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. He winks at you sarcastically. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about him or her? Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth, the lieutenant says quietly, about an officer who's so far out of cover he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. You're not the son of Lung. He's trying to protect you from further rough hand... Handling dashed out by the sunglasses, sunglassed man. Okay, yes, you get the joke. Leave it at that. Can't imagine any more. Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His gray eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. 
They feel sad. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. Kim, who is this guy? Mm-hmm. He shakes his head. I'm not getting involved in this. It's not my style, he thinks, glancing, glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Ooh, boy, they're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognize them. Got some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't look like a cop he inspects you. You know what you look like? Like a sack of shit? Exactly, the man nods excitedly in approval. He didn't answer your question. Now you want to answer questions for me? No, he says calmly, and then keeps staring at you. Why not? This is not my job. Why don't you go and effing do yours and solve this damn hanging? If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you don't want me want to hear me say things. Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Come on, John. Okay, say things. He adopts a lighter tone. I want to hear you say things. Hear that? He wants you to say things. Say one. Suddenly, out of nowhere, case-related things start popping up in your head. Okay, I'm doing this investigation. Man's hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Hey, why am I even telling you this? Not yet. Yeah, I can see that. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. Why are you? He gives you an odd look. Oh my god, there's more. He looks at you in disbelief. You want something more. What is it? Talk about the hangman again. Nope. So, I have to... Let's see. Watch out for your, uh, watch out for yourself, loser. That voice so very familiar. Did you hear it? I'm calling your station. Okay, recognize the voice. Lost my badge recently. You were there. That's where you remember me from. Let's see. Memory trouble. You don't say. It turns away from you. Goodbye then. The voice, voice thing was a coincidence. Run along, asshole. Yeah, not much of a change, but still. Okay, the man with the sunglasses in a hypothetical f Station 41. Weird, right? I know, super weird. There's something we're missing here. Something you can't put your finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. Uh, let's see. I was thinking the same thing. We should just ask him if we're from the same station. Why didn't we have this thought in the middle of the conversation? Uh -huh. I uh, just crossed it off the list. It's probably not true, though. It's absolutely true. This guy hates me. Again. I can't believe this shit. He shakes his head, looking like he really is having trouble believing this shit. Look, I have to ask, are we from the same station? I'm gonna say no. Just to see what you'll say to that. What do you say? Alright. Okay. John, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay, I was clearly wrong. He's a firefighter, a male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind, not a cop. Go with your cop work. Don't let it stop you again. Or don't let me stop you again. He is... Oh, I wonder if he's actually from, like, the police... The people that investigate the police. I mean, we certainly are a bit of a problem. For a lot of reasons. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. I don't know if any of these characters have anything new can to I say. Help you? Okay, I don't quite have enough money to pay him. Can I talk to this man yet? No. No, Grun Grunge Northern Lion is just here, just being grumpy. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you with? Oh, we should not talk to the cops. We should probably go back up to what's her face. Because we never actually did end up talking to her. Because I got too engrossed in books and random garbage. I think she's still up here. But yeah, the, uh... Was it the tapes that contradicted, or was it Hardy that contradicted? Oh, no. We'll talk to her again anyway. I'm always worried that I'm missing something, or I, I've missed, like, a whole area, but I think I'm pretty locked to where I am. We might have a lot more to do, though. Oh, 
Hello, officer. What brings you up here again? We concluded our autopsy and would like to ask questions about Lily. Lieutenant nods, taking out his notebook. Let's see, I wrote down the nickname Lelystad. He moves his finger across the page. And tears one out and hands it to you. I have questions that might help solve some gaps in our field autopsy. I'm sure my colleague has a few of his own while I take notes. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed you. On it is a list of autopsy observations, recorded nearly in blue ink. The last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. It was lovely stat, the place I mean. In Oran... Oranye. Or... Oran... Oran Hayes? Oran Hay? Uh, like I said, I saw the... I saw the pronunciation thing, had it for a bit, and then it was gone. Anyway, uh, I think it's a municipality. Is the term? It... A nowhere town there. The Lelystad municipality is a few boroughs and even fewer cities. It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gotwald. Executive summary, cows, silos, and wheat. You're almost right, officer. The lieutenant shakes his head. But, uh, like you just missed a shot in the darts. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. I'll update the form. You're both from Oranje? Yes, we're compatriots. Did that bring you together? No, he was too old for that. And from another part of Oran Herek. Or Herek? Her her I don't know. I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together wasn't Oran Hay. It was bad habits. Sex and alcohol. Speed. Probably also Sildenafil. No love for Mother Oran Hay. What was... But wasn't he a soldier? This would be worth pursuing. A military man, but not a patriot? No, he left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did in, on Seminine. He wasn't the flag-waving kind, he was the making-money-killing-people kind. He was by no means a stupid man. She takes a long drag of her cigarette, then washes it down with coffee. A noble person, a small platoon leader, certainly not a patriot. As an Ron haste yourself? Didn't his lack of patriotism annoy you? No, there's nothing on Mundi. The old world, old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Come to think of it, maybe Ronhe did bring us together in loathing. I love Revical, Revachol, though. She looks around at the wind in her ha hair. I hope she loves me, too. How old was he, miss? He was 42. 42, are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had so many scars that made him appear older, but no. The memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Looks like you're right, officer. The lieutenant taps on his notebook once, as though assigning some kind of point. Points are good. Have one, you old dog, before we all die. I didn't know this was a competition, Kim. It isn't. Police work is cooperative sport. His eye color? Blue. Light blue. They were like... She stops, her eyes half-closed, then continues... Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange, seeing the eyes in his effed-up face. Pardon the swearing, she takes a drag. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly, and he had a beautiful soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth? Yes, severe, she seems to enjoy the word. It made him look like half his face was cracking away with some strange smile. That and those eyes. Oh yes. The lieutenant suddenly remembers his hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with bri brilliantine. Made it oily, not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. Cam, I said that I put the brilliantine on the form. Do I get a point? No, he answers dryly. But I put it down there. Point to the red autopsy slip. Okay, sure, here you go. What else are we missing, officer? He asks, trying to get the questioning back on track. He had a tattoo. What did it mean? Oh, she smiles. That. What did it represent? Do you know? It was a map of his life and the places he visited as a soldier. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. For showing off to chicks? How so? How? She leans back, imagining him lying in bed, and freakish musculature laid out on the sheet, scarred, of course, tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this Orin... 
Haze Lit? Yes, this is the very essence of Orin Haze Lit. A moment's respite, dark and hopeless, is the struggle itself. She leans even further back to demonstrate. He's smoking, and drinking of course, and his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars, tens, hundreds of them, maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, she points in the air with her sharp nailed finger, picking out an imaginary tattoo scar. What was this baby? And he says, she lowers her voice comically, I was too hardcore, don't ask me about that. She go so she goes, okay, well what's this baby? And he's like, saw some bad shit there, killed some loincloths. And so it goes star after star, port after port, third world country after third world country, and he's done horrible things in every single one of them. You were the woman in this? Oh yeah, she nods. Can you tell me precisely what these mean? Enter the photo. No thank you, she doesn't take it. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. She pours herself some more coffee. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms from a small town. He was also poor. And the government of Ron Hay needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer for money. He went to Killer Academy in Vrader Fort. Then he killed some people in the Seminine Islands, and then on other islands too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Revishal and got killed himself. Thank you for clearing that up. She looks over her shoulders to the sea, and back at you, smiling faintly. Change of topic, perhaps? Do we love the Didiman? It very well could be, yes. What do you mean? What do I mean? She raises an eyebrow. I have no idea. I don't even know what you mean. Love Didiman, what does that mean? He told me, love Didiman. That's not funny, officer. Eh, let's just go with it. I'm a crazy pants. Perhaps, miss, it was communism that killed him. A moment ago was love, and no, I don't think the Union is communist. There are a couple of shades pinker than that. They're not hardcore in that way, is what I'm trying to say. What are we talking about anyway? This politics shit is a lot in the morning. Is it even morning? I think she's just tired. She doesn't know what you meant by that. Can you blame her? Something miraculous is coming, he told me. The man next to you blinks. His expression does not change. All right, let's see where this is going. From way out in the northwest, he told me. Cool, the woman nods. We ordered a toxicology report. Any idea what that'll show us? A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. She grins. Barbiturates, amphetamine, sildenafil. You know that? Sildenafil. It's like you suspected. You have a great nose for that. this stuff. What is it? It's for maintaining an erection. Uppers are vasoconstrictors, so that feat becomes problematic. Okay, why do I know this? Because you're a scientist, of course. How much does that toxicology report cost the police of Revishal? I can do it for half that. Save you some money, make some myself. It's quite expensive, miss, but we'll manage without your help for now. I think we're finished with this line of questioning. Alright, the lieutenant puts the slip back in his notes and observes the young woman for a moment. Coolly gracefully, she pours herself some coffee. Talk about her room. About the collection of prescription drugs down there. Thank you. I put a lot of time and effort into it, she says without any discernible irony. Technically, possession of narcotics is legal in Revishol, but you should... should... It uh, is legal, but you should still reprimand her. Narcomania is nothing to be proud of, miss. She almost spits out her coffee. What did you say? You heard what I said. Narcomania is a serious issue and nothing to scoff at. <laughs> oh my god, now it's turning into narcomania. It's got to be serious if it's two words. Her face lights up with laughter. I'm sorry, she gathers herself. The collection includes Nacra, an opioid antagonist. Comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. That's something that happens to you often, miss. And Stone isn't aggressive, just inquisitive. Better safe than sorry, she takes a drag and smiles. Seem to have, among other things, preptide. Oh yes, one of my favorites. Cures many ailments. Like what? Like not being able to stay up for 36 hours, she thinks. Not being happy. It cures those ailments. It's just a mirrored speed, speed molecule, basically. As far as that goes, then. And the window is new. It is. She moves slightly to your left and checks her reflection in it. 
The lieutenant makes note in his notebook. He finds the answer unsatisfying. Okay. Talk about the assault. You don't have anything else. Okay, so the only other thing I could do would be volition. And I'm garbage at that. We got some thoughts, too. So I guess let's start going through these. Wait, stop. Does that mean the... Bl Wait. Wait, stop. The man bloated beyond all recognition was 42. That's what she said, yes. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition all swollen in dignity of morality. He was 42 years old. Where's this going? How old are you? That's where this is going. 45 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath, you wonder? You could ask either of them. Kim, how old do you think I am? Huh? Lieutenant isn't quite sure he heard you. How old do I look? How old? 58. Oh my god. That's really old. Really? You ask me, he shrugs. Uh, you're probably right. Uh, that's about what I look. Actually, make that 54, he squints. Alcoholism has severely impacted your appearance. And I was wrong about the age of the deceased. Wait, this requires scientific measurements. Bring it on. I'm not afraid of the truth. Date of birth generator. To the laboratorium! Made the right call there. Feels good, pure. About what? I'm talking about your zero tolerance policy towards the bania of narco. You're in, the, you're in the right there, powerful stance. Would you like to take it up a notch? Would you like to become an anti-narcomania zealot? I'm pure and steadfast, totally uncorrupted by narco. Yeah, you're pure, unravaged by narco. Of course, it's pretty obvious you've done a lot of drugs in the past. We'll probably do more in the future, but it doesn't matter. You're right, I can't think of any objections. Of course not, you've always been an anti-narco militant material. You kept her off a dark course with that interjection. Are you ready to save lives? I'm ready to start saving lives. That's good to hear. The lieutenant acknowledges your strange mumbling. He does not have any narcotics visibly on him as he says it. Good. <laughs> oh, boy. This game is a journey. Oh, hey, there's another door here. There's a small, heavy door with no lock in sight. <laughs> Where does this lead to? I don't know. He makes note in his notebook. Not the first closed door we found in the building. There's also your mysterious blue kitchen door. Do you think it's important? I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. The vigilante is the cadaver hand. He nods towards the young woman. A number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. Push. It's barred from the inside. You can hear the bar rattle in the shackles. Sounds like it's heavy too. Very sturdy. Well, that's a long shot, and I don't really have a whole lot that benefits physical instrument, I don't think. Oh, I do have pants that boost electrochemistry. Actually, I have a lot of pants that boost electrochemistry. Okay, so for putting that one extra point in effectively, how much does it go up? What are my chances? Still grabbage. Was that what I was wearing? Must have been. I'm gonna put this back on. I'm not sure what I want to do with this. I don't think it's worth a point though, not with those odds. I could try it, like, a hundred times and maybe get in, but I don't think that's something I'm super amazingly keen on. Oh, you know what I should do? Should have done a long time ago. I should probably save for a day three start, because we haven't done much today. We've talked to a couple of people, and jerk cop especially, but that's about the extent of it. Uh, still going to be kind of a problem getting past Jerk Cop. Well, I'm not even sure necessarily what Jerk Cop is here for. I'm assuming it's to check my progress because I'm a complete failure. Which, 
you know what? That's to be expected. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of confrontation or something with the guy. I don't feel like I'm not... I, I don't feel like I'm doing that bad of a job here, though. Like, all things considered, I, I've actually been fairly successful at finding everything available. So, more scripted than anything else. I want to interact with that window. Behind the dock worker is a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass, uh, scrape the gra glass like bony fingers. Squint. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in the spring. Too cold outside. Look out the window. Nope, nothing. Just black tangles. Like the hair of an old woman, motionless. The wind in the yard does reach the hawthorn. Nor does the light come in from this window. Okay, maybe later. It's you again. What is it? I want to talk. Uh, let's see. So I talked about uh, talked to Klasa, Klasha about the tape, and and nothing. She stands by what she said. An effin' effer. He stares at his beer for two seconds intently, then turns to you. You're the worst cops in Revachol. I gave you gold on that tape. That effer wasn't aimed at you. It was her. It was dark stuff, but it didn't prove anything. They didn't change your minds. Dark. Dark's when you start a goddamn death rock band. He says... He said he'd rape her. He shakes his head in disbelief. What did she have to say then? Fine by her? This is what people are supposed to be like? Often... Uh, whoop to do Actually, I think it made her a little nostalgic. Yes, in fact, the lieutenant looks at you, then him. I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny! Titus mumbles, his lips barely moving. No good goddamn psycho whore. Alright, he slams his giant fist on the door for him. All effin' righty then. It, I guess it's good then. That effin'. Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. Her voice is a bit softer than earlier. Titus rubs his chin with his palm. As if trying to grind it smooth. It's just perfect, just effing perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawman? You don't have to say everything out loud, just mix and match. Maybe she isn't who you thought she was. Nah, I know her. He looks upstairs distracted, and she's just a girl. In over her head. She's a hardcore party girl with a bigger death wish than mine. Yeah, he cracks his knuckles thoughtfully. Right about that, she takes way too many drugs. Oh, well, it's... As they say, you can't do anything with an underdose, the mesk says with a philosophical look in his eye. With an overdose, you can at least try to come off of it. Take a bath, do breathing, exercises, get medical attention as necessary. With an underdose, you're just you. Yeah, underdose isn't, isn't an actual word. Yeah, but I mean, she has an actual drug problem. Not like you, not like us. He glances at his beer. I don't think I've ever been... I, I don't think I've ever seen her sober. Be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? Or nah, she's still in denial. You know, like a defense mechanism. Yeah, that was a possibility. Alright, be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? I already told you, he puts his giant face in his hands and sighs. We haven't hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men are... Men too are growing silent. Or growing increasingly silent. The man is slowing down. Looks like a bad blood sugar crash. He can't keep track of all the variables anymore. Come on, Titus. It's been a long day. I'm tired of running back and forth between you. I can see you're tired too. Why don't you just... You know what? He gets closer. I am tired. Tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her Titus said F off. He throws his beer can down. That lying, scamming, we're done, this is over, you understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah, there's a silence in the room. Elaine starts saying something, then thinks best not to. On the floor, beer drips out of the can, into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What's the quiet funeral shit? What we need is some beers in us. He looks around. Bartender! 20 beers for the dock workers union. Why don't we make it 40, huh? The man shouts from behind the counter. 
Why don't we, we make it a hundred beers? You're not loud enough. A hundred beers. Now we're talking. Glenn livens up. Hop a day, hop over there, cafeteria manager. Okay. The window might be closing. The more beers they get in them, the less cooperative they'll be. I'm gonna take off now. Okay, rhetoric. That's something I can that's something I can boost. I'm pretty sure. No, I can hurt my rhetoric. I can't I can't boost my rhetoric any further. Frustrating. I think this is worth it, though. Where is rhetoric? There it is. Something I'm pretty good at, too. So, decent chance. I'm gonna try it. We might have to time cop this one. I don't know. What is it? Alright. Angus can't take the pressure. Discuss the 8th Hardy. Confronted about the drug trade. You're being manipulated. Convince Titus he's being manipulated. You should know by now, Titus Hardy will never falter. One of his boys will. Bad Angus, the powerful guy. Mr. All Muscle. Time has come. Put him in the pressure cooker. Just remember it's about more than Clossier. Clossia. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. One of his boys will. Bad Angus, powerful guy. Okay. So that's it then. Case closed. We're going home, Kim. Huh? Lieutenant raises his brow. You'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. In Martinez, they just kill you because they don't like you. Got it. He takes out his notebook. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Let's see. You're a foreigner because of some chick. You work for the wrong people or because they like killing. Eh, because of some chick. A wince. It's involuntary. Bring that up one more time and you won't get to write that report. Yes, I understand, Elaine. That's your name, right? Elaine, you'll kill us. He scratches in his notebook. That's what they do in the Wild North. I'll just hang you, like in the Dark Ages. Make a display of your corpse. It wasn't that. It wasn't, the fat man says with a wheeze. We could just... We just couldn't get him down, okay? That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. The old man reaches for his belt. But his voice is strangely calm. He's on to you. He knows what you're trying to do. Look at Kim first. Look at Kim first. The lieutenant has put down his notebook. His hand is resting on his holster. He gives you an imperceptible nod. What? What does that mean? Or what? You're gonna kill me like you killed him? For no effing reason? We didn't kill him! We didn't even hang him! He was dead when... He takes a breath, wheezing. Shut up, Angus. He was dead before you hanged him? Fatty, the little guy, hits Angus on the back of the head. A loud slap. Say one more thing to the cops and all. Dennis! Titus roars. Stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo? He points to the old man. Take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. The room falls quiet. So quiet, you can hear Angus wheeze. Angie, what's your... Where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. Left it at home? I can't get it. I'm too effed. He grabs his chest. I'm sorry. Why are you so effing fat, Angus? Lizzie snaps at him. Now it's all pointless because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. He turns to him. I told you to just give her up. Lizzie. He turns to the fixer. Your help is no longer needed. Go tell Everard. Fine, I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast, she walks off without looking back. You're in. He's all yours. Questions. Sorry I made you guys fight. Kim, we did it. The lieutenant gives you a smile. Only you can see. Hell yeah. So you didn't kill him. He was already dead. He nods. You hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. What was it? We're not sure. Probably a bullet. Wound was difficult to see. So there was a wound. You should try looking at it one more time before you send the body away. Why? Because the girls asked us to. They're in some shit. Girls. Plural. There's another girl. Two of them. Take note of this. We'll probably say more about her later. Did she kill him? Oh, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. 
He doesn't think she did, or at least he hopes she didn't. What happened Sunday night? Vasya came down. He points to the stairs. She seemed really out of it, drugged up, even more than usual, bug-eyed and gurning. You know, not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. It w she was scared. I knew someone had died. How'd you know? I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario, only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. The rat-faced man snickers. You don't get to talk yet, Shanky, points at him. You're still on the bench, and you keep taking it easy too, Angus. Turns back to you. What happened then? We went upstairs, sure as day the Merc was dead, and there was a bullet hole through the window. Effin, he scratches his chin. Dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. He means they've been sleeping together. Tibbs patched the window and the corpse we hanged. Who's Tibbs? The 8th Hardy? Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. Tibbs, that's short for Tiberius? Yeah, he nods. Good man. I bet their father named Atticus... Father's named Atticus Hardy. Lucretia Hardy would be their sister, anyway. If Classia didn't kill him, why cover it up? Why the cover-up? You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. I didn't notice anything. What kind of shit are we talking about? The can't-show-up-on-police-radar kind. There are people after her, from the old, old world, where she came from. These people, who are they? They're powerful. He looks out the window. Connected to the mole intern. Moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. She says if she showed up in your system, she'd be ghosted away. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? He shrugs. I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. Sorry, I made you guys fight. Me too. So who killed the Merc then? Any leads? Not yet, just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. What are you thinking? I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hers, you mean... I mean the people after Klausia. Maybe the shot missed? Maybe it was meant for her. I like that. The young guy nods. Been thinking. Same thing myself. And you had ideas about his past too? I do. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns, training, years of bad blood. Probably. Or it could have been someone else from Cronell. He pauses to think. Tell you what I do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. He's calm now. Threw all that turmoil away and became himself again. Whose idea was it was it to hang him anyway? Hers? In a manner of speaking. Remember the two girls? He may be speaking of about the other one. Earlier said the earlier you said the girls asked for your help. Was this the other girl? That's right, he blinks. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it for political reasons. It sent a good message. It's her, isn't it? The drug trafficker. The missing eighth hardy. Big guy steps towards you. Fella, you think too much. He's awful, right? You're gonna hurt your head. The woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her anyway. You know, it's okay for there to be a Hardy girl, Titus. His face seems like concrete. He shakes his head solemnly. We're Hardy Boys, and that's it. Sure, but can you tell me anything about this affiliate? Name, current location? Nope, he says. You're not getting to her. It's Plaza you want to talk to. Thanks for this, Titus. I'll go talk to her, for the last time. You do that. He grabs his beard and swirls it in his hand. Then thinks of something. Hey, cop, before you go... She... He looks up. Lazia came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. And this is where you wash up when you've got nowhere else to go. The Union takes you in, but now... Now she refused that protection, but... You'd still prefer if we didn't take her away. That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just... Be a couple of runes and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. The lieutenant slides his notebook into his coat pocket and then turns to leave. Huh. Honestly, since they don't know who the killer is, I'm not sure why they incriminated themselves to this degree. I guess it's truly to protect her, because... Finding this out potentially leads whoever's looking for Klausia. Klausia? Kla yeah, Klausia. Probably. 
back to them ish. It's a weird game. I like the leaps of logic, and it's interesting to kind of see where it goes. Normally, I can kind of call the plot for these games. At this point, I have nothing. I am just going, and we'll figure it out. I'm I'm sure once we get to find the, the drug girl, things will be a bit easier. I'm also betting this door is really important. Unfortunately, I like the physical prowess to get through, but oh well. It's always good to see you. She cracks a weary smile, leaning back on the railing. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, being here with you, and what's to come. The Hardy Boys tell me what really happened. I understand. She puts her coffee mug on the table. You don't look surprised. You were expecting this. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. She winces. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. Is it? Something's off here. Shh. I can't hear what she's saying. If you knew we'd found out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. She looks at her feet. Out of the shit I've gotten into. She implying the Hardy boys are the law? Hardy boys are not the law. We are. I know that, but the people around here, they don't see it that way. And if I'm to stay here, I need to get along with them. Cool. I'm satisfied with this explanation. I'm not. There's more here, miss. You're right. There's more. More? You answer the answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. She reaches for a new cigarette, briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay, and to the horizon, gray and pale violet in the morning light. What lies beyond it? The pale, the Mundia Sola, the Occident, and then Oranje, the old, old world. Is that why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the moral intern? She nods. You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. She lights the cigarette. What's going on? What did you do? Just business, but bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They'll kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning. Enter me into the moral intern mill. There's a wince in a painted little smile. Well, then I'm effed. For nothing. This murder didn't have to have anything to do with me. Effed? People after her. Moral intern people. This isn't Orin Hayes Lit. You said you studied Orin Hayes Lit. What is this fugitive stuff? I did. I also had a side job selling insurance that I was really good at. Got picked up by a bank. Competitive intelligence, they called it. After that, I sort of transitioned out of the whole culture scene. So what did you do to have these people after you? It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Revachol, or even in Ornhe. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company, the kind you really don't screw with. I took their ledgers, two decades worth of accounting. He taps on his notebook. I need the names of the companies involved, and who hired you? The job was... Loose to in Country Savings Bank. They found they sound small, but they're part of the Loose Cap conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know, but they're after me too, along with Loose Clap, uh, Loose Cap, and their friends in the Moral Intern. She breathes out heavily. Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Loose Cap. These people engineer fiction. Uh, engineer financial disasters in second world countries. The conglomerate also includes the Bank of Consecration, Airberg, and the popular Papa Lalo line of dairy products. Papa Lolo. Yep. Papa effin' Lolo wants to kill me. She smiles. I'm sure there are people who have done much worse than that. 
Sure, I'm not a war criminal. But it was bad. People lost their jobs. Good people, too. Not just C-Suite. She shakes her head with the thought, or at the thought. A lot of people got hurt, she concludes. But that's more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. What happened here the night he died? We were there. She points to the window. The silhouette in the bed is visible. Together. In bed, I mean. Tell me exactly what happened. Okay. She takes a deep breath. He was in a kneeling position. He just entered me. I was on my back looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned to him. She breathes out. A moment's silence. His eyes were looking through me and his mouth was open. Dumb. I could see... I could... Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. Then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and fell to the floor. He fell to the floor. There. She points to the window. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow not to scream, then ran downstairs. There's a long pause. She just stands there, arms at her sides, then continues. I waited for the second shot to come, for me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Your cigarette, miss. Oh, she looks at it and quickly tosses the butt aside. I'm sorry this happened to you. So am I. She immediately proceeds to light another one. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. That's okay. He makes a note. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait, Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Titus said you looked pretty high. Oh, yeah, she tilts her head. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Good thinking. Clear your head. You should clear your head and get into his mindset. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. What'd you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot. Just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore, so I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway. Down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. What happened after you ran downstairs? Sylvia was tending the bar. She looks down. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union, union box was full. Ruby was there too. Ruby. Eighth Hardy. I don't know if we've heard the name before. They were having such a good time. She pauses. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Before we continue, who's Ruby? Ruby, you know, the leader. The leader of what? The Hardy Boys. She says as if it's self-evident. I thought Hardy was the leader of the Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen. Like... When they need... Uh, like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. This Ruby, in her phrasing, is entrusted with great power. She trusts her. So do others. Would you say she's the eighth hardy boy? Why not? Alright, let's go on. What then? Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation... That I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. It's what she does, you know. Take care of things. I helped her get the body into the bathroom. We used the belt to pull him up under the shower to keep him upright. To produce lividity matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? About 20 minutes, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood, you know... You know what it does. She looks at the ground, then raises her light brown eyes to meet yours. Then what did you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on. His armor, too. It was tough. But I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I got him ready by then. They carried him out. I knew that they were going what they were going to do, make it look like it was a hanging. Ruby said they would. Would... What did you do while they're hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. I also said I wouldn't see... Oh, she also said I wouldn't see her for a while. That we should lay low or something. So I did. This Ruby, where is she now? I don't know. I haven't seen her since. I'll need to 
take this question to the Hardy Boys. Interesting. Why'd this Ruby go through so much trouble to hide something someone else did? Look into this later. What happened? Did you hear a gunshot? Oh, when it happened, did you hear the gunshot? When he was shot? She thinks I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. Could the people after you have killed him? That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. And? I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone. She looks at her cigarette so they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. Either way, something to consider. We can't go after Loose Gap. Not yet. There are other saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. If there's one thing I know, it's that you'll get nothing from there. Why did you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. The answer comes fast. Which is an indicator of truth. Idiot? She's nothing of the sort. I don't think so. Why'd you do it? You have to understand, the people around here, no one was making the call, and he kept rotting, and they picked his clothes off, and that little effer threw stones at him. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud, thud. She shakes her head. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Revishol. She's def She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That's impossible. When was the window changed? Last week. Angus and Titus's brother. I think he's called Tibbs? Oh, Angus and Titus are siblings. He's called Tibbs, took care of it. She takes a drag. You should have another look at the window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. In her bedroom? Inside? Yes, you see the glass sparkling out the corner of your eye. I think we're done here, for now. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Uh, the lieutenant glances at you, then at the door. He's thinking, are we done here? Or maybe you should take her to the station for safekeeping. She lied to you. And she's a flight risk. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality.